Well, that isn't helping the situation at all. Like, I, I don't understand how I've managed to so thoroughly break this game. Because I've got a whole bunch of giant dead snakes in a cave. When I didn't place them there, nobody has attacked them. And then one colossal snake that's so big, it's clipping through the world and contorting into terrifying shapes. And crushing my army before the battle begins. Like, how is that supposed to be fair? Oh, it actually let me start this time. And it's alive. How are you alive and winning? What's up, guys? Welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That game where the developers were kind enough to give us the ability to make anything we can imagine. And of course, people would go and make some of the most overpowered, stupid, cursed units imaginable. So once again, I've picked out a dozen of these monstrosities for us to check out and question why they were allowed to exist. We'll start things off with a UFO, you know, a flying saucer that looks like it's getting ready to lay down some crop circles, which is weird enough in itself, right? Because we've never seen anything like this in tabs before. But if you look closer, you'll notice that it's actually rocking the Captain Sauce colors, which is weird. Or like maybe it's just sponsored by Space McDonald's. Like, I don't think I have any fans on Uranus, but I know for a fact that McDonald's food has a reputation of destroying Uranus. I have no idea what this thing can do or even how it's gonna be able to do it, but a lot of you guys pointed out in the comments the last episode that I completely forgot to blow up the Shire at some point. And that's a staple in this series. Every single episode, I need to remember to bomb these turd burglars. So we're gonna see what kind of space age futuristic technology a UFO is gonna use to rain pain down on our favorite crash test dummies. Uh, I mean, the carnage was A tier, but it looked like it was just firing cannonballs? Like, uh, imagining traveling halfway across the universe to wage war with the equivalent of metal dodgeballs when bullets exist. Like, it's a good thing I had them face off against a race that hasn't even figured out shoes. I gotta give them credit though, like, even with the weird weaponry decision, they're still pretty effective. So I'm kind of wondering what would happen if I summoned an entire armada of UFOs. Ooh, they don't work well with one another. Not exactly team players, but they managed to stabilize eventually, for the most part. But I'm sure they'll be able to sort things out on the way to their targets. I have complete and total confidence in their ability to do kick flips as they launch tiny fuzzy bodies into space. <laughs> so pretty much what we would expect. I still don't understand this whole cloaking device. I also don't understand why I don't get sponsored by McDonald's. Come on, I'll sell your shitty plastic food. <laughs> Come to think of it, out of all the weird flying units that we've seen added to the game recently, whether it be the drone, or the blimp, or the helicopter, I don't think I've ever managed to kill one of them. Like, I've never seen one of them fall from the sky, so I really want to know what happens if you take down a UFO. And I'm thinking we're gonna need bullets to pull that off. So I'm gonna set up an absolute firing squad of dead eyes. It's so many that there's no way these UFOs would survive. It's not gonna be a fair fight. That's not the purpose. I just want to shoot the UFO or its pilot. I don't even know if these things have pilots. It's always hard to tell what's the vehicle and what's the unit. Like for all I know, that UFO is actually a deformed horse. Hopefully, 150 of these things can actually do some damage. Come on, bullets. Just ricochet off and do absolutely nothing. You have to be kidding me. No! Come on, humanity. You gotta put a better fight than that. Now, as many of you guys already know, one of my favorite units ever created for this game was the Razor Tank. And ever since covering it in a video, I've been seeing more and more variations of it be made. This is called Razor Tank with an Upgrade. What is that upgrade, you may be wondering? Well, I have no idea. My guess is hydraulics. I don't know why a lift kit would be necessary in an extra large bay blade, but it's pretty baller. And of course, I'm going to test it out against the Undead faction, because other than the Shire, this is probably the most beef I've had in this game ever. These guys ruined me last episode, so I have been waiting to get a little revenge. And if we can dice them up 
and just blow them up, then all the better. <laughs> okay, so you do still spin. You are still a razor tank, but you're also a tank tank. That's convenient. You really can't help but wonder if that little upgrade to the razor tank means that now it can take on a tank tank? I don't know what else to call it, okay? I'm sorry, I know it sounds simple, but I just want to survive this initial blast and it actually worked. Yes, the Abrams is out. It's obsolete. The combat dreidel is in. We're changing the face of warfare forever. I want to get a feeling for how powerful this tank shell actually is, so let's launch it into the chest of a giant. And if this thing drops, then I'm going to be dumbfounded. I said the chest. Why are you aiming for the... Dick. <laughs> okay, so you don't even need to get up to speed. It's just begging for death after you've two-tapped its ball sack. Of course, strapping a bunch of giant blades to the outside of a spinning vehicle wasn't cool enough, so somebody had to go and make the true Razor tank, where they swapped out the blades for lightsabers. And that instantly reminded me of all the screaming children that I had to try to ignore while being disappointed by the latest Star Wars. So I'm gonna have a bunch of billies charge in, and they'll try to pick their nose and wipe it on our latest death machine or whatever it is you guys do. Come on, Billy, you've got this. I believe in you. Make sure to have your hat down nice and tight. You don't want that good and attached, otherwise you might lose it with the rest of the top of your head. Whoa, 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 hold up a second. Look, this thing looks really cool, don't get me wrong, but it feels a little underwhelming because it acts the exact same as the regular old Razor tank, which acts very similar to the Da Vinci tank, which is all stuff that we've been using in the game for ages now. But if that's the case, then what would happen if I used a bunch of better cheerleaders? Aren't we gonna get some kind of Razor tank lightsaber tornado? Because these are the questions that I get paid to answer, and I am definitely living the dream. <laughs> yep, that is about what I had hoped for. It's still a disappointment that we can't cut stuff in half, especially with the lightsaber being able to cauterize the wound, but it's still pretty great that we can just charge through entire groups. Don't tell me you've got some stuck underneath your wheels. A little bit of roadkill down there, that always happens. It's so annoying. <laughs> Somebody go get a shovel? I don't know how to deal with this. They're gonna be a puree eventually, but I, I, I don't think the cheerleaders can keep going forever. See, there's your problem. You got a couple of living billies stuck in your axle. Now, I don't know how to get these things out. It's like I said, I would imagine they're gonna work their way out eventually, but it's not gonna be much to watch, so I suppose we should just move on. This next unit is called the Titanoboa, or a giant snake, and I, I just wanted one of them to come slithering out of the cave for us to fight, but instead, I got like a baker's dozen immediately, and they're all stuck in the cave, I think. I don't know how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna have them face off against nanners, because I'm pretty sure snakes don't eat bananas. Um, It's not letting me start the fight. Why? Maybe I just need to lure all the snakes out of the cave with a delicious hobbity treat? <laughs> Come on, guys, there we go. Um, they all died immediately and then spawned themselves some strange little snake warriors? What are these? No, the boas are <laughs> decomposing. Okay, well, go ahead and, oh, well, isn't that just great? The giant snakes were actually a trap. It turns out they have a whole bunch of little snakes. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on, you guys don't eat bananas, just eat frame rate, sweet Jesus. Too many snakes, too many snakes. I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> Come on, I didn't want to be giving a PowerPoint slideshow today. Please, just kill one or the other. I don't even care who wins at this point. Did Blue win? Well, the good news is most of the snakes seem to be decomposing. One in particular is also alive. <laughs> I don't suppose if we, oh no. Yeah, you can't live through twisty turnies like that. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong here. 
Well, that isn't helping the situation at all. Like, I, I don't understand how I've managed to so thoroughly break this game. Because I've got a whole bunch of giant dead snakes in a cave when I didn't place them there and nobody has attacked them. And then one colossal snake that's so big it's clipping through the world and contorting into terrifying shapes and crushing my army before the battle begins. Like, how is that supposed to be fair? Oh, it actually let me start this time. And it's alive. How are you alive and winning? I managed to somehow create the world serpent. Nothing is ever going to be able to beat this. The snake bodies refuse to decompose. And I'm running out of real estate real quick. So we're going to leave that behind and move on to the baby kraken. And I think the reason it has a lasso is because it's going to act like a tentacle. Maybe? Maybe? No idea, we're just gonna find out. It's not that much of a kraken, it's just kind of a, a giant derpy squid. But it seems to be able to eat people all the same. Oh, I am so sorry for sending you guys into this. The upside, at least you're getting pulled into its beak instead of a tentacle up the butt. No anime girl treatment for you fine fellows. I wonder how all those lassos would work with something like the ice giant. Because the problem is, the lasso unit, the actual western faction on a horse lasso, is very difficult to coordinate. They don't like to all tie up the same thing, but maybe a school of squids could? I don't really know if you can actually tie up a giant to begin with. Oh, not really tying him up, just uh, trying to tie him down. Oh, well, they managed to keep the ice breath off of them. That was impressive. Some kind of weird BDSM stuff happening here. Oh, he's gonna break free. You guys are getting frozen and stomped. Come on, I, I want them to win because they're, they're sorta cute in a weird, twisted way, but I don't think all these ropes are gonna be able to hold him back. Yeah, he's just too overpowered now. Single punch will take him out, quick freeze. You're just waiting to get turned into sushi. There it is. This might actually be an interesting matchup because it's rare for us to be able to have two completely different units use the exact same strategy against one another. Like they wanna pull each other in. So is it just gonna be some weird wobbly horse tentacle hug? I don't really know. I would imagine there's gonna be flying. What, why, why is there flying? What is happening right now? I, I don't think the sea creatures can quite figure out the knees of the land creatures, which makes a whole lot of sense because I can't figure them out either. This is a unit that I've been sitting on for a while now. I've been saving this one. It's called the Gatling Cannon, and I feel like it has just as much of a chance of firing off a whole bunch of cannonballs at once as it does exploding. Like, I'm no weapon biologist, but I'm pretty sure you can't shove a Gatling gun down a cannon and then just hope the two work. There's only one way of finding out. We're gonna have a bunch of stupid horses run into fire and hope that this thing actually shoots at all. That That's not a very good fire rate. It's slowly picking up speeds, but the horses are kind of gangbang. <laughs> Why did I choose horses? It does fire quite quickly though. It's doomed, but it, it's firing quite quickly. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's actually gonna pull this off. Holy crap, how did you manage to survive that much horse penetration? Good for you. So it is actually an impressive unit, but we're gonna need something a little bit slower. How about a bunch of shieldmen? They'll take their sweet time getting across the bridge, which means you should get cranking. Come on now, get those cannonballs of firing. <laughs> that is super effective. I can't believe it. It actually is a Gatling cannon. It makes total sense. Weird that it can keep up its momentum even if it stops, but I won't question the Gumby physics here, okay? As long as it works, it works. I'm proud of it. I get the feeling Snuffy would like to have a word with this thing. He should be able to fit across the bridge. I don't know the weight limit of it, but hopefully the cannon ho. Oh, those cannonballs do a lot more damage than the regular ones. If that's the case, then maybe a train of Snuffies would like to have a word? I just want to see this thing really get up to speed and start bouncing balls off of their giant face. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's that's a little bit faster than I would expect. Holy crap! <laughs> the, the fire rate is so absurd, but Snuffy in the back has got a great meat shield. 
it's gonna dissolve eventually, man. It's no snake body. <laughs> so many cannonballs. That actually is a really, really effective unit. Like, if you could put that weapon on a, a tank, you probably have the best unit in the game. I'm sure the Gatling cannons would love to be introduced to the undead faction. <laughs> no, they would definitely appreciate getting me some revenge. And if they have some moral support behind them, that's perfectly fine. It's not like it's gonna make them fire at such a rate that my game crashes. <laughs> no, we're good. Oh, wait, the giants are gonna be a problem. Like, all the little guys get erased immediately, but the giants take a little while before they pop into bones. <laughs> That's it, just scatter them into the grass, turn them into fertilizer. <gasps> that felt good, I, I needed that. Some sane people may consider this a little bit excessive and unnecessary, but I really want to take down one of these friggin' flying aircraft, and if I need to use an overpowered created unit to do it, then so be it. Gatling cannons will hopefully be able to take out the blimp. Is the blimp running? Where are you going? Go ahead and fire at me, I dare ya. Okay, but now we get to fire back. <laughs> and if there's one thing that we've learned today, it's the cannonballs are actually good technology. We did it. We we actually killed the demon that was flying this thing. It only took a, a couple of rocks. I don't understand. <laughs> do you think you guys would be able to do that against the UFOs? Because I would love to see one of them fall from the sky, hopefully before all of the others. Oh, they're a little fast. They're on top of you real quick. That's a problem. You see, the blimp is slow and stupid because it's a blimp. There's a reason we don't bother with combat blimps anymore, but if we had flying saucers, we'd probably think about it. I've noticed a bit of a trend in the fact that all of these large custom units seem to clip into one another. So if I did something like this with the Razor tank with an upgrade, am I just gonna make a wall of knives? <laughs> They're absolutely inside one another. Oh, that's not good. We don't even have the cannons firing yet. Where are they going? No, just start the fight now. Start the fight now. Can I get a fight? It's running, I think. This might actually be the lowest frame rate I've ever gotten in this game. I'm not doing anything right now. It, it, it's not editing magic. We're just getting like one frame every 30 seconds. <laughs> oh no, the Razor tanks. You know what? This is probably a good place to leave things, right? You know what? I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And I get the feeling this episode might be a little bit shorter than my normal video, but like, I I'm kind of running out of things to cover. You know, there are a lot of really interesting things being made on the workshop, but at the same time, a lot of them feel very samey. And I, I want to keep bringing you guys new and interesting things every episode. Plus, I'm, I'm kind of losing my voice from yelling at those friggin' snakes. <laughs> but if you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment letting me know, and maybe we'll return to congratulate Blue on their victory, even though they didn't really do anything. I think Red just kind of tore themselves apart trying to spin while they're inside one another. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.